This is KGW News at Noon. Some people here in Oregon and in southwest Washington woke up to snow today. Drive 8 caught some big flakes coming down in battleground. Oregon City was another area that got a dusting early this morning. It's a little bit hard to see there, but our Skycam in downtown Portland caught some small flurries too. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. You know, many of you who did get snow have sent in your photos. We will share those in just a minute. But first, we want to check in with meteorologist Rod Hill. So, Rod, no more snow in the forecast for the lower elevations. Uh, now you're just talking rain. Uh, that is correct. So uh, that's the big show. We didn't get much of a show with the cold air track that started last week. But we will tell you now that up and down the I-5 corridor, temperatures have warm. We're still getting some snow showers in the coast range, the Cascades, and even passing through the Columbia River Gorge. But uh, if you look at the radar, see how it's pretty dry from Longview down to Salem? And I don't expect that to change much uh, in, in the coming hours at all today. So here we go with uh, lunchtime temperatures. Forest goes 37. Happy Valley 1,000 feet 36. They had some snow, but look at all the temperatures now around 40 or even better. 42 in downtown, also 42 in Salem, and also 42 in McMinnville. Now, while the afternoon may see a passing shower, but really be pretty dry, that changes this evening. See this cloud shield offshore? This is our next big low. It will produce some increasing gusty winds, especially out near the gorge, and also bring increasing rain into us this evening. And I'll time that out coming up. But the big headline of this next system coming in, rain for Portland, headline number two, winter storm warning for the Columbia River Gorge. This goes into effect mainly for this evening through uh, tomorrow morning. And the concern here is more snow, four to eight inches could accumulate, but also freezing rain and sleet looks to be a good bet. I just uh, chatted with one of the winemakers out at Cathedral Ridge Winery in Hood River, and uh, he told me they still have about five inches on the ground there. Could add four to eight to that tonight into tomorrow morning. Brenda? All right, thank you, Rod. We want to say a big thank you to all of you who've been sharing your weather photos and videos with us on our KGW Facebook page. Rhonda took this photo in Sumter where the snow covers the ground and the roofs. And then Morgan shared this dusting. This is in Vancouver. You know, our own Tim Gordon and photojournalist Chad Dehart had a little fun in the snow this morning. They made that snowman on the Sylvan Overpass. We also want to move south, show you what it looks like in southern Oregon. ODOT's drone photographer Rod Stevens shot this near Diamond Lake. Traffic also an issue in this part of the state, with roads closing from Roseburg to Crater Lake. All the snow is weighing down those trees and they're falling onto the roadways. The plows certainly have been working overtime to try and clear a path. Hey, make sure to stay up to date on the changing weather with our KGW app. You can see hour by hour forecasts for your particular area, along with live radar and traffic conditions. Also today, a fire destroyed a historic restaurant near Troutdale early this morning. I want to give you a closer look at that video there. Huge flames coming from Shirley's Tippy Canoe. The Corbett Fire Chief tells us the restaurant is a total loss. It's been serving people since the 1940s, and it was even featured on the Food Network. We talked to some of the restaurant's neighbors. Well, it's sad. It's been here for as long as I can remember, because I grew up just next door, uh, at, you know, as a kid. And uh, to see it go, it's, it's sad. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. We don't know yet how the fire started. The historic Columbia River Highway is closed between Troutdale and the Stark Street Bridge. It was at least earlier, but now this afternoon, it's back open. We're learning some more about a woman struck by a car in Aloha last night. Sheriff's deputies say she has serious injuries. The woman was hit around 530 on TV Highway at 192nd Avenue. It appears she was not in a crosswalk at the time. The driver stayed there on scene and is cooperating with police. You know, that crash happened about eight miles east of another deadly crash. That one was on Tuesday, but it was also on TV Highway. A 51-year-old woman was hit by a car walking to the bus stop in Cornelius. Her family is among those calling for safety improvements to prevent more deadly accidents. Police are now treating the disappearance of Tiffany Lazan from Albany as both a missing persons and a death investigation. 
They didn't elaborate, but they also called her estranged husband, Craig Lazon, a person of interest. Craig is the last person to see Tiffany on December 27th. He claims she moved to Washington. Police arrested him earlier this week for animal neglect related to Tiffany's cat, which has also disappeared. These two children will be forever missed by all of us. I personally just feel so blessed to have known both of them. People packed Vestal Elementary School in Northeast Portland to honor two children swept out to sea by a sneaker wave. Mike Benner was at the vigil last night. Lola always was quick to help others when they needed help. She could see a, a hand that needed to be held and she had the strength to go and hold that hand. From the first grade teacher at Vestal Elementary School to the principal, nobody at Thursday evening's vigil was short on fond memories of Lola and William Stiles. Lola was always ready to find her friends and William and I had a funny connection where I would tell him I was ready for him to start kindergarten at Vestal and he would smile and say, I have to go to my school now, but I'll come to your school later. That innocent humor is among the many things the Vestal community will miss about the siblings, taken from this world far too soon. Over the weekend, they were with their dad on an off-beach trail north of Manzanita when a sneaker wave knocked them into the ocean. Dad Jeremy survived, but the kids did not. These two children will be forever missed by all of us. I personally just feel so blessed to have known both of them. Ask anybody in this crowd of well over 100 people and chances are they'll tell you the same thing. Lola and William were special and nobody knows that better than their parents who were understandably absent from the vigil. But mom Jamie had a family member share this message. My Lola was so spirited and my Bill had a heart of gold and anyone that has ever met them would say the same. They loved each other beyond measure and were always up for adventure. We should all take solace in that they are together and now on the greatest adventure of them all. Mike Benner for KGW News. The Washington County Sheriff's Office served a search warrant at Catlin Gable in Southwest Portland. It's part of their investigation into alleged sex abuse there. A report in December found students accused as many as 21 teachers of abuse dating back to the 1960s. One student has already filed a lawsuit against the school, and investigators say other students have come forward since that report was released. Inmates at Wilsonville's Coffee Creek Prison are serving up lattes while they serve time. We got a look at the program that teaches inmates new skills so they can get a better job once they get out. This coffee cart is part of that effort. Inmates and staff can buy specialty drinks at the stand while the women running it learn life skills. It taught me a lot, it taught me patience, a lot of patience, and teamwork, team building, problem solving, things like that, you know, how to have healthy uh, relationships within like the work area. And you can check out our full story on that program right now on KGW's YouTube page. I'm telling you, what a day for the Portland Thorns yesterday. With the top overall pick in the National Women's Soccer League draft, the Thorns, select, the Thorns selected forward Sophia Smith out of Stanford. She won a national title her sophomore year. She was also the most outstanding offensive player in the NCAA tournament. Now Smith is 19, becoming the first teenager to be picked in the draft. She was asked about her decision to go pro. A lot went into it. I just felt like this was the best time for me to take the next chapter of my of my life and my career, and I think that there's no better time to do it than now. So I went for it and followed my heart. But the Thorns were not done. They got the second overall pick too, and took Washington Washington State forward Morgan Weaver. Looking forward to seeing them play.